Social UK. If you're just finding my channel and you like new car reviews, then please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you join me on my journey. Today I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Fiat 500 and this is actually Fiat's new hybrid model. Since 2007, the Fiat 500 has become an absolute staple on our roads. There's been a few rivals come and go, but the Fiat 500 has remained pretty similar looking throughout the years and I believe that it is a completely safe option for a lot of people. Now if you do a quick Google search it doesn't take long to realise that critics don't really rave about the Fiat 500. I think Fiat feel that they get away with a lot by this being such a popular model. But then again not many cars come close to it for its small quirky styles and there's only such rivals as the Mini which is more expensive to buy and more expensive to run and then there was the Vauxhall Adam and also the Citroen DS3 but both of those cars are now discontinued so if you want something that looks fun, stylish, is cheap to run then you can't really go wrong with the Fiat as I mentioned previously, in 10 years, the Fiat 500 hasn't had many changes. It's still got its small and compact size, which is brilliant for driving around cities. Plus, it has city steering, so that means that it makes it light and agile. There are some negatives to the Fiat 500 in the fact that some people think that its build quality is slightly lesser than other brands. But all in all, it remains a very strong option. This model that I have in particular is actually the lounge model. So this new lineup of cars gets a few different options. The entry level pop gets 14 inch steel wheels, aircon, daytime running lights and a speed limiter, which is a good level of specification comparing it to previous models. The lounge, which is the one I'm testing today, gets 15 inch alloys, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, fog lights and rear parking sensors. The Sport does what it says on the tin and adds some sporty styling like a rear spoiler and tinted windows. It loses the sunroof but gains cruise control. The Star gets bigger 16 inch alloys, a digital instrument cluster and an automatic climate control. While Rockstar, similar to the Sport, gets all the specification of the Star but with sportier styling including tinted windows and a different style of alloy wheel. The car I'm testing today seems to be the best value for money and will remain the most popular trim. I was really pleasantly surprised with the interior of this Fiat 500, of course I never know which ones I'm going to get, and all of the cars that I'd looked at online all had the recycled seats. Now although I love the idea of helping the environment with the recycled materials, they are super dull looking, and these chequered seats with the black and grey stitching and the white piping are a lot lot nicer. Plus it does make me feel a lot better that although I've got a leather wrapped steering wheel, this isn't real leather. It all ties in really nicely with the exterior of the car and the really nice grey gloss dash. The dashboard is logically laid out and features lots of glossy plastic buttons, which gives the 500 a classy feel. However, the gloss finish can show up scratches easy if you're not careful, and the light dashboard colours can be reflected in the windows when the sun is low. It's also starting to feel somewhat dated, which is all the more noticeable in this latest model. The steering wheel is thinner than the old models and has flashes of chrome and higher quality materials before too. Space in the Fiat 500 probably isn't going to be number one of your priorities, but it is still going to be important. So I'm going to go ahead and get in the back and see how I get on. Like you can expect, it's not class leading, but there is a comfortable amount of space here. For short journeys and smaller people, it shouldn't be a problem. There is a little bit of a letdown that there's no USB chargers in the back to keep kids occupied, but there is access to two of these cup holders and there are ISO fix fitments for two child seats in the rear. This car is the lounge spec, which gets rear parking sensors as standard. Now, the only thing I would say about these rear parking sensors is there's no visual aid. It is only the sound, which it's nice to have them, especially considering that's quite a small rear window. So seeing out of it can be difficult, but it's just a shame that there's no visual parking display. 
The all new hybrid Fiat 500 gets a one litre three cylinder petrol engine, but it also gets a 3.6 kilowatt starter meter. So what the starter meter does is it takes the energy lost from your braking and your coasting, and then it runs it through a lithium ion battery and then uses that energy to help the car run a little bit faster and also help it start up from a start stop and give you better economy. Now, one thing you will have noticed I just said then was braking, which is completely common, but coasting. Now, coasting is a bit of a strange one. And I actually had to check that it's okay nowadays to coast cars, which it is, and I was completely unaware of. If you don't know what coasting is, you've probably never run your car down to zero miles and desperately tried to get to the petrol station. So coasting is when you take it out of all gears, put it in neutral and let the car essentially roll along. Now that's something that the Fiat 500 wants you to do. So it will come up on the front dash and it will say N. And at that point, it wants you to put the car in neutral and to roll along. I don't know if this is a little bit naughty from Fiat because to include that in the official MPG figures, probably not a lot of Fiat 500 owners are gonna know to use the car in neutral. So I don't know, let me know below. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing that they're using neutral in their figures? The hybrid engine doesn't particularly feel that much different to the standard petrol car, either because it's so well integrated or because it's not really doing that much at all. Driven blind, it's unlikely you'd notice any difference between this and the 1.2 litre petrol engine that it technically replaces. Fiat claims the new motor is between 10, 20 to 30% more efficient. WLTP figures claim fuel economy of around 53.3 miles per gallon. This little Fiat gets a modest 70 brake horsepower. Now, if 70 brake horsepower means absolutely nothing to you, then it isn't the quickest. It will get from 0 to 60 in 14 seconds, which has shaved off just a few milliseconds than the previous time. However, for everyday driving, can this car cope? And absolutely it can. I drive a car like this every single day. And if you just want it to get from A to B, then it is plenty quick enough. But if you want something that is going to put a smile on your face from how much it's fun it is to drive and you also want something that you can comfortably take over people on back roads then this probably isn't going to be one for you but if you're not a speed demon and you just want something that is going to get you from a to b quite comfortably then yes it's absolutely fine as with all of the cars that I test drive, I have done extensive research before I drove the Fiat 500 and sometimes it's difficult to not let that research cloud your judgement and actually that's easier said than done because I did go into this test drive expecting to hate the Fiat 500 and to struggle to find things that I like about it. But I've actually been pleasantly surprised. Remember that I am directly comparing this to my car, which is the Volkswagen Up, which has 75 brake horsepower. So around five more brake horsepower. And actually, this car doesn't feel any more slower. It does go slightly quicker through the gears because it's got six gears. So you do feel like you're changing gear quite often. But other than that, one thing that's really surprised me is the steering is really weighted and this leather wrapped steering wheel is really soft and feels quite luxurious. So the drive is actually quite enjoyable. Yes, it does take a little bit of a push to get it up to speed, but so is any small engine city car. If you've brought this car because you want to get a great mile per gallon, then I think you're going to be reasonably impressed with it. Notably, the Fiat 500 is quite a noisy drive, and I think really that's the only thing that's spoiling the experience of this car. Although, if you had the stereo on, it would probably drown this out. I mean, how many times, especially Fiat 500 drivers, do you drive in complete silence? I don't think it's enough to put me off of this car, but it is something to take into consideration. There is a reasonable amount of safety equipment fitted as standard. All models come with a skid-reducing anti-lock brakes, seven airbags and electronic stability management, as well as hill hold assist and hydraulic brake assistance to help with emergency stop. But it's certainly once again behind other brands that have the anti-collision technology and lane assist. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you've enjoyed it, then please give it a massive thumbs up and get involved in the comments below. Do you still think that this is a good rival for the city car market or do you think that Fiat need to have a big change? Thank you to my sister Nicole for lending me her Fiat 500 for the day. And until next time, bye.